The Wicked Witch of the West is the iconic villain of The Wizard of Oz, and during the climax of the movie, she dramatically melts into a gloppy green puddle, leading Dorothy to safety. But how much energy and heat would this extremely messy way to die actually take? Today, I find out. Hey everyone, let's dive into this, shall we? So how much energy, in joules, would have been needed for this witch to actually complete this supernatural process? It's obviously going to be a large quantity, as we're talking about completely changing the phase of matter of a human body. Let's begin. We need to start the calculation by dividing up the body by section. This can be done by element or by material, which is better for this type of calculation. Because approximately 63% of the body is water and other fluids, we can discard that whole section as it's already in the liquid state. And to give a heads up, when I say percent of the body in this video, it always means by mass since that's what we're dealing with. Anyway, we then have to divvy up the other 37%, which will sort into fat, minerals, carbohydrates, and protein, meaning bone, skin, and muscle. Of course, this is not the most accurate way to sort body tissue, but for our purpose it's fine because most of the masses of molecules in our body are negligible. Looking up this information, I source average protein to be 22%, fat 12%, minerals 2%, and carbs 1%. Basic phase change in chemistry gives us two formulas to use when attempting to melt an object. Energy equals mass times the specific heat of the object times the temperature change of the object, and energy equals mass times the heat of fusion of the object. Meaning that you first have to have the energy to get the object to its melting point, and then have the energy to actually melt it. This can work for all but two substances, skin and muscle, due to the fact that these molecules don't melt, they only burn. So, the energy it takes to melt the Wicked Witch will be equal to the MC delta T's of bone, plus skin, plus muscle, plus fat, plus minerals, plus carbs, added to the M heat of fusions of bone, plus minerals, plus carbs. That's our enormous equation. Now let's do the fun part and start filling it in. A lot of this stuff is look upable, even if it does take some digging. Most of the melting points, specific heats, and heat of fusions I was able to find easily, but a few were harder to research. I simply used the most abundant element in the minerals, that being sodium, and plugged in those heat values. For carbs, I used sugar, or glucose, again the most abundant, and entered those values. I did the same thing for the specific heat and heat of fusion of bone, using collagen. And with that, all of our heat data is filled in. Next, we'll fill in by far the easiest part, the initial temperature of each substance, which is just body temperature, 37 degrees Celsius. And finally, the mass of each substance, which again, is relatively simple. Given the fact that the witch is merely a couple inches taller than Dorothy, a 12 year old girl, we can estimate the witch's height at around 5 feet 1 inch, or 155 centimeters. The witch is clearly pretty thin, so when looking at a height to weight conversion chart, we can deduce that she weighs approximately 120 pounds, or for this purpose, 54,431.3 grams. The penultimate step was then, of course, to convert all units to joules, grams, and degrees Celsius by using a calculator, unit converter, and molar masses in the case of moles. And with that, we're ready to calculate. The mass of each substance is equal to the total mass of the witch times the percentage by mass of that substance. Multiplying and then adding everything together, we get our final answer. It takes a whopping 3,511,817,652 kilojoules to melt this malicious western witch. Because the substance with the greatest melting point is bone, it would also take a body temperature of 1500 degrees Celsius to accomplish this feat, over 40 times normal body temperature. And as for the energy, since joules and calories are directly related, it's equal to the amount of calories in 2,945,067,804 slices of pizza. It's equal to the amount of energy that would be used by a standard 100 watt light bulb if you continuously left it on for 1,113 years. Pretty cool. I mean, considering the amount of minor substances we left out, as well as the probable error in some of the heat values, we can only definitively say that it takes around 3 to 4 billion kilojoules, but it's still a very interesting number. We also know that the witch's whole body can't be melted, as things like hair, muscle, and skin just don't melt, so this is essentially the energy it would take to reduce her to a puddle and ashes. 
People have also pointed out that, if anything, it looks like the witch is vaporizing during the scene, but since we do see a puddle and don't know the specifics, I decided to stick to melting. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this calculation as much as I did, and if that's so, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe so you know when I upload new movie calculation videos. I also make videos on Harry Potter, Pixar, Laika, hockey, football, and much more, so go check those out as well. See you later.